what cloud is in general isn't really that important. I, I think everybody understands that the Amazon is out there in the cloud and you can just push your servers out there and not deal with, well, sort of not deal with running your own infrastructure anymore. You still have your own applications and you still have to uh, manage your vendors and, and Amazon is certainly no exception. Uh, If you look at the, the options that are offered out there, I, I use Amazon a lot because it's a fairly generic example. There's a lot of other providers offering different options from hosted VMware, things that are sort of pseudo virtualized. Some companies just rebranded their virtual platforms. Some companies rebranded a bunch of blades and called that their, called that their, cloud, ah, their cloud platform. And Rackspace does it as well. There's a bunch of other large hosting companies. How, how many of you provide uh, virtual type hosting for any of your uh, your clients uh, external to your organization. Okay, so you have a few people a few people that provide that, and is is that something for those of you that do it? Just uh, is that is that a like a structured consumption price model type thing like Amazon has going on? So it's, it, so for you it's more of a one off type of thing. Okay, interesting. I have a, a friend who does a, a hosting company. I've helped him set up. It does sort of, of, of a one-off as well. It's interesting to, just to hear about the different models for delivering it. Because as, as many platforms as there are, there's many different uh, pricing models, as I'm sure any of you have looked into the costs have, have certainly seen. It's, it's sure not a one-size-fits-all solution. Uh, I, think for ins I think everybody's sort of surprised that when you buy Amazon, you don't get storage unless you buy their S3 as well. It's kind of a shocker for some people. It's, it's definitely a new market. Uh, I, I think relative to IT, it's, it's still pretty immature. Uh, you've, any of you who've really looked into it have probably seen that there are, are distinct availability concerns. Uh, those are definitely overhyped. The availability is pretty good, and if, for those of you who actually track your uptime of your own data center and know how hard it is to hit five nines, can, can definitely have some appreciation for the investment it takes, especially for a, a large organization like Amazon. Uh, their platforms are large and distributed, but in some ways, the Zen platforms that they use and how they manage them are uh, susceptible to wide-scale failures as well. Again, these are large platforms, and any one platform at a certain level can fail. Uh, there are also security concerns, but again, I think these are overhyped. I'll, I'll use Amazon as an example again. Amazon, uh, pretty much, for the most part, your machine is, is encrypted, and there's encrypted access to your machine. but what about accessibility between your machines? What about virtualized security? How do you provide that in those models? They're fairly flat and uh, sort of Google-like in how they provide it. They say, well, here, this is, this is what it is, and you can pr provide some layering yourself, but we don't really provide a, a complete solution in that way. We just provide one piece of a solution you're going to have to build yourself. And that's why I say it's fairly immature. Uh, it's not a full platform solution. You can't just replace an entire enterprise data center overnight with Amazon without, to some degree, managing it yourself. So what, what if you do decide this to yourself, uh, decide to do this to yourself, where you decide to go down the path of moving into the cloud? Well, I think assessing your business model would be important, and certainly you know, getting rid of your own data centers and moving certain apps into the cloud might make sense in some circumstances, but I've seen a lot of people do it for purely financial reasons, not understanding the, the business model behind it, how that's going to affect their SLAs and their customers. So I'd urge any of you that are looking at it to take a real hard look at uh, letting go of the reins in, in favor of just cost savings. And I think most CFOs recognize that, uh, especially after the things that you may have seen over the last, not as much the last five years, but the few years before that, after the dot com and the, the massive outages that a lot of companies had, that it, it's, it's not such a simple equation. If you do it, you're still going to have to manage it yourself. How many of you have been involved where, where a company you've worked with has outsourced some or all of their IT function? Okay, so it's, it's, it's a pretty common experience. And uh, so how many of you uh, no longer needed to do any IT work once some of that IT was outsourced? I didn't think I'd see any hands, unless, unless you were one of the, one of the unlucky few. Uh, you still have applications to manage, infrastructure to manage. It's, ju it's just one platform. So whether the platform's in your data center or whether that platform's out in the cloud, it's still there to be managed. So that's, again, why I say don't believe the hype. Uh, I have an, a, a customer example. I, I was working with a fairly large uh, financial services customer. And they moved into the cloud. 
and they moved into the cloud way too fast. And they, they were one of the early adopters. And, and not to fault that, but they moved a number of critical platforms, customer supporting platforms into the cloud, and they really didn't do their due diligence ahead of time. And luckily, we, 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 we were brought in, uh, probably they were three quarters of the way through, and we were, able, we were able to turn it around. But they had some really massive outages, because they really didn't plan how they were going to use the platform. They just knew that they wanted to use it and that it was a solution. But again, they didn't look at all the other components. And I keep harping on that. We'll, we'll talk about some of those other components uh, in a minute. So the uh, option 1.5 is, you know, it's, it's really the same thing. Building a private cloud for yourself is really equivalent to having your own fairly mature, you know, if you look at service-oriented type of uh, virtualization environment. It doesn't have to be that hard. It's, it's a good step if you already feel that you're fairly mature in virtualization. And by mature, I mean that you are able to automate most of the functions, fairly comfortable three, four, five years into the technologies, and, and have a, a number of critical production systems already in virtual, virtualized type environments. So I, I always say a good, a good threshold is if, you're, uh, if you have a critical database out there somewhere and you trust that on, on a virtualization platform, You've gotten to a point, and, and it works fairly well with a lot of outages. You're probably uh, you're probably fairly well along the maturity path. If you're just virtualizing a few web servers and such, you have to look at how comfortable you really are with the technology. There are an awful lot of options out there, and the real difference between the next option, which is the virtualization of the applications, or the wrapper around it, the uh, the automation, the provisioning how you manage your applications, if you do on-demand type things, if you let users manage their own applications, or I know a painful experience probably some of you have had is that uh, you let business units provision their own servers, which depending how your business runs may or may not be a mistake, depending how your IT organizations are set up. But it's a big undertaking. It is services-oriented infrastructure. I think the most common step is looking at a, a next generation of virtualization setting up the base platforms, the foundation to build out cloud. And once you really get comfortable with those virtualization technologies as a whole, and I don't just mean server, I mean the whole virtual data center, the storage, the networking, everything geared around delivering those services in a virtualized way. And really, a good concept I look at would be across multiple data centers. How many of you have more than one data center facility? It's pretty common. BCDR is not really a, an option. Uh, for most organizations anymore, you have some sort of contingency plans, and that's typically you know, either an outsourced or, or another type of data center facility. You still get the same quality of experience. Uh, you're not jumping as far into the deep end. You're going a little bit further with the virtualization technologies. I'd say this, this is the point at which it becomes your de facto platform uh, for all production applications going forward and somebody would have to have a fairly good justification for not using this platform. And I wouldn't just consider VMware and all the x86 platforms. If people are using mid-range IBM or Sun type systems, it's, it's absolutely viable to do the, the different type of virtualization available on those platforms. Uh, same goes for mainframes and even fairly next generation of cell phones, uh, you're going to see virtualization on those as well. And virtual desktop infrastructure. Although I, I tend to shy away from that a little because it's sort of a misnomer. The technology's been around for a while. I'm sure you've all heard of Citrix. It's been, been around forever. The virtual desktop infrastructure is really just a different spin on some things that have been around for quite a while. So that's not quite as, quite as new and interesting uh, as the server virtualization. I'd also ask yourself, if you're not doing it now, are your IT people uh, prepared? Do they have the right training? Do you have, do have the skill sets necessary? There's an interesting combination of uh, security, uh, architecture, and uh, also the server, the advanced server and storage administration skills, along with the network administration skills to make sure it really works all, uh, works harmoniously. And in the end, I ask anybody who wants to go down this path, do you know what your business goals are? Do you know what platforms you want to put on these technologies? And how are you going to measure that success? And if that's sort of the litmus test, if you don't know how you're going to measure the success of that or, or one or, or more initiatives, then I'd, I'd go back and look at those, those planning steps first. 